What's up everyone? Eli and Louie in the van here. Uh, I'm doing a collection update video. I like to call them new stuff videos actually. Um, before we go on a walk. It's a rainy day today but it's warm and I don't know, that weather's kind of up my alley so, so we're stoked. I um, thought I would do this video before we go on our walk like I often have been doing lately. Um, quite a bit of stuff here. I mean at least for me and quite a bit of variety, so this is cool. This is kind of what I'm all about, really. Um, not that I plan it or anything, but let's start off with a movie that I got. Um, and I've been wanting to get this movie for a long time. I think I saw this years ago, but I can't even remember if I've seen it. I doubt I've ever seen the whole thing, so I'm pretty stoked um, to own this and to be able to you know, watch it from front to back. But we have The Gate. What year did this come out? Um, it's an 80s movie early to mid 80s if I remember correctly and I don't but uh, yeah just a, just a good old classic horror movie stoked to watch it or rewatch it or whatever stoked to have it then we have some CDs and we got some vinyls so let's just go with the CDs I guess I bought these from a good buddy of mine Andy um, some of you guys know him he's a good dude Maybe one more. What did I get from Andy? Okay. Bought these from Andy. Normally Andy trades, but I just didn't happen to have anything that I was trading um, that he wanted at the time, so I just bought these outright from him, and I'm super glad to have them. Super glad he didn't want them so I could get them. Um, <clears throat> he threw in this uh, cool Everlasting Spew record sampler, which is cool. I haven't heard any uh, Everlasting Spew bands. Uh, maybe one. But I don't own anything from any of them, so it, um, it's, it's a label that I've been hearing good things about, and I've really been wanting to dig into their, um, to their, uh, to their lineup and you know see, you know if they have any bands that I like, which I, I no doubt I, they probably will. So this is cool, man. <clears throat> Came out in 2019. There's the bands right there. We got uh, Sarox, Engulf, Infuriate, Vitriol, Theorem. Psychotomy, Void Rot, Construct of Lathe, Valgrind, Galvanizer, Hellish God, Quantum Hierarchy, Condication, and Assumption. So I don't know if you guys have heard any of those bands. He also threw in some stickers and stuff, which is cool, because I'm like a 10-year-old kid still, and I like stickers. All right, what did he give me here? Come on. <clears throat> Quite a bunch of them. Nice, uh, nice sampler CD, too. They did a good job. Very good job. So this was an oddity, and um, I don't know, maybe you saw the video that I did a couple years back where I bought this movie, um, or maybe it's just a coincidence that he threw this in. These are uh, temporary tattoos of the movie Akira, anime movie from, uh, what, mid-80s or whatever. <clears throat> I don't know if this is right, but it says right here that they, it says right here, 1987. I don't know if that's because the movie came out in 87 or if that's when these tattoos were made, but if these are, like, <laughs> from 87, that's pretty fucking badass. I'm not ever going to use them because they're way, it's way too cool. I don't want to... Yeah. Plus, I think I'm a little too old for temporary tattoos. I don't know. You guys wouldn't judge me. Man, my camera keeps sliding down. I'm sorry. This is, a. Uh... Yeah, what can you do? All right. Some stickers. Give me a maggot stomp sticker. And some bands that I, you know, I don't think I'll ever know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I've seen this logo before. What do you guys think? It's cool. It's damn cool. There's no way to tell what band that is, but... Uh, the Path. I'm not familiar with that either. State of Mind Records. Recordings. Not familiar with it, but I'll be looking into it. Looks like maybe somewhere in the long of the lines of punk and hardcore, maybe. Victim. Not familiar with that either. I'll be checking all these bands out and record labels and what have you. Put that shit away. Alright. Now on to the CDs that I ordered from him. Bought from him, whatever. Um, we have, I think this is the second Cold Northern Vengeance album, Maelstrom. Maelstrom. Um, 
I think it might also might be their final uh, full length before they just ch uh, change their name to what did they change it to? Northern? I think they changed their name just to Northern, which I don't know why they did that. But uh, Maelstrom, 2015, Morbun Records. Haven't heard this album yet. I do love their debut. I think their debut is fantastic. Put out by my good buddy Marty on his label, Bind Rune Recordings. Fantastic album. So, needless to say, I'm pretty stoked to hear this. I don't think I've ever heard it before. Um, certainly ever, you know, haven't ever owned it before. So, anyways, um, we have the most recent full length by uh, Australia's Abominator with Evil Proclaimed. This came out on Hell's Head Banger Records, I don't know, a couple years back. The Mighty Hell's Head Bangers. Hell's Head Banger Records. It's a Hell. Hell's Headbangers. Yeah. Plural. Um, Longtime fan of Abominator, as I am a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, the, the earlier Australian, you know, black and death metal bands. I'm a big fan of all those bands. And, uh, you know, um, Abominator are no exception. They, uh, you know, they're not quite as early as like, um, you know, Destroyer 666 or uh, Bestial Warlust or whatever, but they're still definitely, you know, Aussie, you know, black death metal royalty, to say the least. Just, you know, if you haven't heard them, I mean, just, I guess you could kind of lump them in with like that war metal sound, but they're not, they're not quite like that. They don't, you know, they're less, they're less along the lines of like, um, you know, Blasphemy and, um, you know, other bands like that. They're a little bit more, they're not quite as fast but still, you know, still just as brutal and barbaric, but not as, not as, you know, fast and grindy as, you know, a lot of that war metal stuff is it's a little bit more slower and pummeling. Um, not like doom death slow or anything, but just not, not quite as, you know, not quite as fast and uh, unhinged. But uh, honestly, I, I like Abominator more than most, you know, if you're going to put them in with war metal bands, I like them a lot more than most of them. And last but not least, really, really happy to have this because I've always wanted material from this band, um, but it's not not exactly easy to come by anymore. If you want original pressings and stuff, so we have a we have U.S. Doom Death Band Ceremonium with their uh, compilation from 2012. Man, it's already been eight years. I wanted it back then when it came out, and I forgot about it. It's called Dreams We Have Written. This came out on uh, Weird Truth Productions out of Japan. Not really familiar with that label, but uh, I didn't really know what this was. I knew it was a compilation, so I'm, I was like, I'll, I'll fucking take that. But it turns out this has every single thing they've ever done. So this is their in, this is their entire discography right here. Granted, they didn't have a large one, of course, but uh, two discs. So I'll, I'll kind of go through this with you there. I can't remember where they're from. I want to say New Jersey or Pennsylvania. Definitely East Coast. Um, so what we have here... Pull the booklet out. Very nicely done, by the way. Some, some liner notes by one of the founding members. All right. So starting off, you get the Into the Autumn Shade. Classic album, if you've ever seen that album cover. Came out in the you know early 90s. Classic, classic Doom Death. Um, one of my favorite Doom Death albums ever. There's some band photos and shit. Then you get the uh, No Longer Silent um, full-length album. So, backtracking a little bit. Into the Autumn Shade came out... Man, when did it come out? I want to say like 95 or something. And I think No Longer Silent came out in like 2002... These are just rough estimates. I could be wrong. I might not remember correctly. No Longer Silent. Notice the Dark Throne cover they did. Very cool. Cromlech. And you also get the uh, Nightfall in Heaven. Um, I think it was an EP or something. Short. Just a couple songs. And aside from that, you get the Demo 93. Under the Eternal Horizon. Which tracks off. Visionaries of the Macabre compilation. You get a 2001 promo as well. So awesome. If you want to look into Ceremonium, 
you know, maybe track this one down. Uh, save you a lot of money, but, you know, but I, I would love to have original pressings of all that stuff, but I just, I don't see it happening anytime soon, so, if ever. But, uh, thanks, Andy, for hooking me up with these. Really happy to have them. Really, really happy to have them in my collection. And we'll get to some more CDs that I've bought randomly over the last couple weeks from different places, a couple different places, I think. Um, here's a band I've been wanting to dig into for a long time. You know, my local record store has had uh, this album for a long time, and I've known that they've had it. Um, so I'm, I'm not real familiar with Krautrock. Um, and if you aren't either, should, I shouldn't even bother to tr try to kind of... I'm not going to go over the history of it. Um, weird German bands from the 70s that kind of had like a, you know, kind of like a space rock, prog rock sound, but uh, they kind of had their own sound. And it was, um, I don't know when it was dubbed kraut rock. I don't know if they called that called it that in the 70s or if that came after. I don't know. But anyways, um, you know, I'm a big prog fan and I just... I figured, you know, kraut rock probably be up my alley, so I thought I would kind of dip my toe into it, I guess. Um, this is one of the kind of most uh, legendary bands of that whole scene. The band is called Can with Tago Mago. Tago Mago, I don't know. Um, this came out in... Fuck, what year did this come out? Remastered edition, as you see. This came out in... Fuck, I don't know. 70s. <laughs> At some point. Um, so yeah, anyways. I, yeah, I, you know, I don't know shit about Kraut Rock. I've known about it for a long time. Always wanted to, you know, kind of dip my toe into the waters, check it out. You know, like I said, I'm a big prog fan, so I figured it, I, I could probably get into it. Uh, here's some cool liner notes here. So, okay, I get this album. came out in 71. Hmm, interesting, huh? So yeah, Kraut Rock. You know, like I said, I'm a, I'm a total pedestrian when it comes to it. If one of you guys is a Kraut Rock fan and you want to throw some recommendations at me, I'll take it. You know, maybe two or three. I don't, not that I don't appreciate, you know, anything people would ever do for me, but it, when, <laughs> when I have friends that throw out like, oh, here's 15 recommendations, I'm usually just not going to check any of them out. I just, that's too overwhelming for me, and I can't do it, so. <laughs> if there are two two or three, you know, Kraut Rock albums that you swear by uh, that aren't this one, go ahead and shout them out to me, and I'll try to check them out. Um, this was kind of an unexpected purchase, but I just went for it. Steve Winwood, Back in the High Life. So, I showed those Traffic albums, you know, recently that I picked up, and I really liked those. And I figured, all right, I'm a huge Genesis fan. That's where I started. You know, later, way later on, I got into Peter Gabriel solo stuff, which I love. You know, I even love some of the earlier Phil Collins stuff. So I figured I'll do the same, you know, I'll give the same chance to Steve Winwood. Um, it's a good album. And this is like his, this is his best selling album, most popular album of all time by far. This was like his big, big, you know, big selling album. Um, back, into, back into High Life came out in 86. It's got, uh, it's got Higher Love. We all know Higher Love. Um, anyways, I've only listened to it once. And it's good, man. It's, um, you know, great songwriting, great uh, great vocals by Steve. Um, you know, everything is cool. N maybe not quite as artsy as, you know, say, Peter Gabriel stuff. And maybe not even, I, maybe not even as much as, like, I don't know. You could probably compare it to, like, the first Phil Collins album. Um Although that, that album has some songs on there that I really love and I think are better than any of these. But, like I said, I've only listened to it once. So um, it'll be nice to have, you know, some some soulful pop stuff when I'm in the mood for it. So, yeah, Steve Winwood. Uh, I really want to find his his first album because it's, from what I can tell, it's more of a, um, more of like a, uh, almost more of like a, a, like a fusion album, kind of like early uh, Traffic. It's got some heavy hitters. Um musician wise I really want to get it uh, probably not easy to find it's on some like long defunct label I don't remember the name of it either but uh, I want that that first Steve Winwood album if anyone has a copy that they don't want next I didn't even know of this the existence of this one right here 
Apparently, it, it, it was included in a box set that came out, I think, two years ago. And the label just decided to release it uh, by itself, which was cool because I didn't have the box set. I don't often buy box sets. A lot of the time, uh, I think they're very cool, but too expensive in a lot of cases. So what we have here, Toto, old as new. Um, if you've been following me over the last year, you might uh, you might realize by now that I'm a massive Toto fan. They have worked their way up uh, way high on you know the list of my favorite bands. I just I, I love the fuck out of uh, out of Toto. So what this is, um, it's got tracks. It's it's I want to say it's kind of comprised of bits of bits and pieces. They got like. There are some Jeff Percaro, uh, you know, drum tracks on here. And, you know, as you, you might know, he, he died many years ago. So, um, I don't know exactly, like some of these songs are new and some of them, I think, you know, maybe they're, you know, kind of like relics from the vault type thing. Like they were, you know, I think they were just songs that were scrapped years ago, not used. So, um, which... In my opinion, when bands do that, it's always kind of, it's kind of risky, at least as far as, you know, from a fan perspective. A lot of the times, um, you know, when shit like that comes out, it's just like, okay, I can see why these songs were, were not used. They're just not very good. In a lot of cases, that's what I think. I've listened to this maybe two or three times, so I'm still absorbing it. Um, all Toto albums, almost every Toto album has been a grower for me. I've never, I've almost never liked it immediately. So, um, I really like the date, the first track, uh, alone it's called really like that one. Um, very jazzy sounding. I dig it. Uh, Joseph Williams, you know, his vocals sound good. Um, very processed as they have sounded for some years now, almost like, you know, Ozzy, you know, <laughs> ever since like 1980, you know, they really, process his vocals sound very processed and joseph williams vocals you know on on more recent work has that sound as well like kind of auto-tuned i don't know man he's super old now and probably just can't hit those high notes like he used to but i think it works i think it sounds good and i have i've seen some live toto stuff from like like 2018 um and you know to his credit he actually sounds pretty good live um you know to to, to this day so that's cool um so check out alone and check out this is a song that i thought i would hate immediately i was like oh no <laughs> i'm sure it was the record label's idea so they did a song with i don't know i don't know what this is what what so not i don't know who what so not are but when i saw this right here when i saw this is featuring skrillex I just wanted to throw like a little, like a child's tantrum, but I didn't. And it's actually a really good song. Um, it's actually one of my favorite songs on the album. So check out, we'll keep on running. Um, everything in between. I like, I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of soaking it in. Devil's Tower is pretty good. Um, yeah. In a little while is pretty good. You got vocals from Steve Lukather. Uh, but yeah, most of the vocals here are, you know, are Joseph Williams, um, like like a typical Toto album. There's some David Page uh, vocals on here. There's some Lukather stuff, but I love Toto, and I'm really happy to have this. Like I said, I didn't even know it existed, so it was a pleasant surprise. Here's a band I like a lot. Um, I had never really planned initially. I never really planned on picking up like their later stuff, and this is from uh, 2015. I can't remember if this is their most recent full length. They might have had one. I think they had one since then. Um, talking about Armored Saint, win hands down. Not something about that that title that bothers me, but uh, yeah, 2015 Metal Blade Records. I haven't heard anything from Armored Saint past like uh, um, not Symbol of Salvation, but I don't know the one that came out after that. I think in like '99 maybe. So yeah, fucking Digi Pack. Um, yeah, I haven't listened to it yet, but, uh, like I said, I never, this is not an album that I was planning on getting. I just found it and used at, uh, at a local record store and it was really cheap and I'm like, I love Armored Saint. Why not? Uh, this release, I love this band, but I'm kind of lukewarm on this EP. Uh, Candlemas, The Pendulum. This came out this year. It only fucking has 
one regular song. Everything else are like demo tracks. Um, most of them without vocals, I think. Maybe all of them without vocals, I think. Mostly instrumental stuff. And just like unused snippets of music. I don't know, it just seemed pointless to me. So I pretty much bought this for the one fucking, you know, actual song, which is The Pendulum. Um, yeah, man, it's Candlemas. I, I fucking love Candlemas. I'm most most likely going to buy anything they put their name on. But like I said, you know, it was 10 bucks. If you don't want to spend 10 bucks on one song, I totally wouldn't blame you. I, I don't know. I, I, I ran through it once. Maybe I'll listen to this shit a little bit more, but, uh, I found all this unreleased demo stuff to be just total throwaway, but, uh, the pendulum, pretty good song. So you guys have noticed probably that I have been kind of Kind of slowly getting getting into Jethro Tull. I really really liked Thick as a Brick. Um, Aqualung, I'm I, I'm not as big on, but uh, we got a live album here. A little light music. I've heard they've always been a great live band. This came out in '92 on Chrysalis Records, and yeah, <laughs> very '90s packaging. I mean, goddamn, does get more '90s looking than that, does it? Pretty ugly, but uh, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, this will be fun to listen to, I think. And that's it for the CDs. Got a couple vinyl records here. For you vinyl dorks. Sorry. So, I've also been getting into sticks lately over the last couple years, so I picked this up. Uh, Paradise, or, what's it mean? Paradise Theater. Um, this was like late 80s I want to say this is oh fuck 1980 okay 1980 this came out you guys can see that uh, I haven't listened to this one yet um, just from what I've read this is this this album kind of bridges the gap between like their you know more proggy stuff and or their more uh, mainstream shit so from what I understand this album is a nice blend of the two styles um, I've read some pretty positive shit mostly uh, critics seem to, you know, like it. Fans seem to like it. I dig Stick 70s stuff, but I also dig their 80s stuff. I haven't heard everything they've done, but like, um, Pieces of Eight. Really need to get Pieces of Eight. That album fucking is killer. Um, yeah, I just don't, uh, I don't have a ton of their stuff. I think I have like, I think it's like the fourth album I have. Um, but yeah, really, really digging sticks. I, I had no interest in sticks like, uh, as a kid and even in my twenties, just the last couple years, I've, they've really grown on me. Here's an oddball that you wouldn't really expect me to have. I almost feel slightly pretentious buying this, but, uh, you know, as I've said lately, many times I'm just, I'm enjoying kind of experimenting in music and listening to different sounds and just shit that I never gave, you know, time of day to. And also, I own one album from these guys uh, that I've had for at least a couple years. So I saw this and I was like, all right, cool. Craftwork radioactivity. Don't know what it sounds like. Haven't listened to it. I'm not. I'm no expert on 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 craft work at all. I have I have Autobahn on CD and I really like it. Uh, this came out in '75. Regular vinyl, of course. Um, yeah, this is a band you guys can definitely talk to me about. Uh, like I said, I have I have Autobahn now, and I like it, you know, on occasion. Now I have this. Um, any Kraftwerk fans out there? I know they're uh, they got a, a massive fan base. They're a very cult band at this point. So, talk to me about Kraftwerk. What should I what should I you know what what should I listen to? Which album should I get next? You know, or which what's their best work in your opinion? Or just something like that. I'm um, really stoked to find this. I just bought this on CD like a couple weeks ago, but uh, I thought it was cool to find it on vinyl, and I really love the packaging. Really, really fucking cool. Jethro Tull, thick as a brick. Um, it's a gatefold, but it's done in like this thick newspaper-y material. And so it's you know, obviously made to look like, like a newspaper. It's fucking cool as shit. Yeah. Love this album. I've only listened to it once so far, but goddamn... Um, out of all the Jethro Tull shit that I've listened to uh, so far, this was, in my opinion, by far their best. Definitely their most proggy. Um, 
I mean, like if you're a fan of Yes, we're talking like early Yes level prog, which I didn't expect, you know, because I listened to Aqualung first, thought it was pretty good, but I mean, it's nowhere near as proggy. You know, Thick as a Brick is is a full on 70s prog album and it's great. Um, I, I'm, I'm still kind of perusing, you know, Jethro Tull's discography, but I don't think I'm going to like anything better than this. Um, just being a, being more of a, a, you know, complex prog fan. You know, I like my prog albums just to be all out prog. Not, I mean, it's cool in bands, you know, kind of like they have little bits and pieces of little prog influences and, and that's cool. But this album, like I said, is just, you know, full on seventies, you know, complex prog uh, music and I love it. So anyways, that's all I got. Talk to me about this stuff. You like prog? Do you like, uh, do you like craft work? What do you think about that Candlemass EP? Kind of pointless. And, uh, you know, you can talk to me about uh, Krautrock, Can. What else should I get? So, anyways, thanks for stopping by. Cheers. We'll talk soon.